morning. When Goliath taunts David to try and intimidate him, he says in 1 Samuel 17, 44, come to me and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the beasts of the field. Well, leaving a dead body to rot and be eaten by animals was considered worse than death. It was an outright dishonoring of the person and their memory. And that was the intention of God's enemies. They weren't playing games. I mean, this was a deadly battle that would end with a resounding defeat. So after Goliath makes his rant, David follows it up in verse 45. You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head, and I will give the dead bodies of the host of the Philistines this day to the birds of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that all this assembly may know that the Lord saves not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hand. <laughs> what faith uh, to not focus on the intimidating presence of the giant, but rather to focus on the greatness of his God and the assurance that the Lord was with him and would determine the outcome. The Lord of hosts would give David a great victory. But what is it about cutting off the giant's head? Three things worth mentioning. First, it would signal to the Israelites that the giant had truly been defeated. I mean, if he lived beyond the stone's effects on his head and the sword's effects on his body, he would not live beyond the cutting off of his head. There would be no doubt that he had lost the battle. That's the point. Second, it would silence his mocking words, his intimidating presence, and his dangerous ways. Uh, he couldn't say or do anything once his head was cut off. All his antics, all his tactics to bring a reproach against Israel and their God would be stopped. No more. And third, it was a way of foreshadowing the time that would come when our enemy, the devil, is finally going to be seized, cast into the prison of the lake of fire, where he will never be heard from again. He will never again have influence on God's people. He will be forever banished, along with every one of his hosts, his fellow fallen angels, along with all who do evil and are not forgiven for their sin. Theirs will be the second death, which is final. Whew. That's sobering, isn't it? It encourages us to persevere in the good fight of faith. It encourages us to persevere in evangelism as we commission with Jesus in seeking and trusting him to save the lost. It encourages us to remember that one day the battle will be over and we will be with the Lord in heaven forever and ever. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You gave your life for mine. Nailed to the cross, you crucified all my sin and shame. It was washed by your mercy. You are the treasure I
Thank you for listening to Mornings with Pastor Jim. This podcast is a ministry of Family Church PC. For more information or to contact us, go to familychurchpc.com. Have a blessed day.